we are going to start. We're going to start now because there's something that I've noticed in art that I've wanted to point out to you for some time. And once you notice these little things, you're going to notice them, I don't know, maybe everywhere. You might see things that you've never seen before in all sorts of paintings. Um, so just be, be, be warned, this might change your experience of many works of art. So things like this. What's he pointing to? What's he pointing to? Things like this again. What's he pointing to? Things like this. I don't want you to tell me later where this is from. If you can figure out which painting this is from, get a big thumbs up from me. Um, and things like this, which could just be, frankly, a Picasso illustration, but it's not. So I'm going to turn off commenting. Um, and yeah, I think you will agree with me that all of these images are evidence of aliens. I was going to say alien invasions, and I think, I think that would be um, a little bit mean to say because I don't know an invasion sounds like something nasty and who's to say that these aliens are nasty in fact I was reading as I was doing a little bit of research for this topic I was reading that aliens came down very very early on in our history and they taught us about precious minerals of the earth and they taught us about science and even technology. There are websites that, <laughs> that, that disport these theories, disport isn't quite the right word, that, that purport or that, uh, that um, um, what's the word to talk about anyway? Uh, disseminate these theories, that wasn't the word I was looking for but that will do. So there has been evidence of alien life the wrong one, alien life for, well, from at least 1776, which is what this image and the one that I just uh, popped up was all about. So this, this particular um, image comes from the 12th century, but it tells the very famous story of something that happened in 1776. Um, and this is all written down in, um, in a manuscript called the Annal Lorison. And this is the story of a siege. Okay, and if you can picture the scene, okay, picture the scene, you're in Sigiburg Castle in France and you are French and your castle is under siege. So you're all in this castle and you are the, the good, godly, Christian French following God's will and you are surrounded by unchristian, probably smelly, dirty, marauding Saxons, okay? Um, and, and this is not good. You are, battle has been fierce, 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 and you are losing this battle. And it's, you know, it's, it's all not looking well for you when suddenly your ruler, which is what I'm assuming um, this guy is here with his crown on his head, um, or certainly a very important person within, within this uh, besieged castle, spots something in the sky. And he points to it, he's like, oh my goodness. And then the Saxons, they also spot something in the sky and they're like, ah. Oh. 
And other people, because there are accounts of this, other people who were in the town square at the time also spotted things in the sky. And I just want to pause here because I just want to say, what were those people doing in the town square when the castle was under siege? And there's presumably Saxons like, as I say, marauding around everywhere. And they're just like, I don't know, what are they doing? Like playing petank or ball or something. Um, anyway, people noticed that there were these, they, it was described as two reddish lights that came over the castle and they hovered over the, the top of the castle. And both the French and the Saxons thought the same thing, which was happy days for the French, horrible days for the Saxons, they thought this is us. The French thought that they were being protected by some kind of alien invasion, um, which probably at the time they thought was God, um, but that has over the years been sort of distorted because of these uh, these strange shapes. And indeed, this is from the 12th century. So um, yes, evidence in 1776 that life from another planet did come and visit us. And you know what? It's possibly um, a good job that life from another planet did come and visit us because, let's have a look at this one, because it involved a lot of, I was going to say famous people, well, I you can call Moses a famous person. I think you can call Moses Moses a famous person. It involves a lot of, um, oh no, not even a lot of, one, one very important person from the Bible and probably lots of other people as well. So it has been claimed and this little tiny image here is evidence that Moses, in fact, from the Old Testament was either an alien himself or a friend of alien life. Uh, as I say, aliens, they came way, way back when. Um, and this, this image, which is actually, it's on a drawer, as in a, like a, a cupboard, um, you know, a chest of drawers in, uh, in a castle in um, Belgium. Um, Royal Fouse Castle, um, and it has been it's 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 brought out not <laughs> pardon the pun um, very often to um, to prove alien alien um, existence uh, because of course in this image you can see I mean I can see one two three four at least four flying saucers in the sky as Moses is at the top of Mount Sinai. They think they're flying saucers. What they could, of course, be is um, some kind of pretty badly drawn cable car, because that was my other thought. But if you're going for the alien theory, then they are flying saucers. And the the idea is, and, and this, you know, this is not me making this up. This is, this is me talking about uh, things that I've, I've been reading on some interesting websites. Um, but the thought is, is that in fact, Moses went up to Mount Sinai and, uh, and you know, in the Bible, he talks to a burning bush. And I'm gonna say that it probably wasn't a burning bush that he was talking to. I'm gonna say, for the purposes of this 11s is, that it was in fact an alien spaceship that had possibly landed in a volcano. Because actually, was there a volcano? Is Mount Sinai the site of a volcano? I think that's possible and that's something that has been debated. Um, are there volcanoes in Egypt? I don't know. Um, I didn't do geography, but anyway, so, so possibly it's the fact that an alien spaceship had landed in a volcano and so was sort of surrounded by cloud and, and, and dust and presumably a bit of fire and, and, and so on. Um, and the aliens got out and they spoke to Moses 
And if you recall, if you know your Old Testament, Moses actually had to go back to Mount Sinai a second time. And it's only on the second visit to Mount Sinai that he came back with his Ten Commandments, which is what he's holding here. Um, so, yeah, so why did he go back a second time? Well, my own personal theory is that he was so surprised at meeting friendly aliens, unless, of course, he was one, in which case maybe he was just having a really good catch up and forgot the whole commandment bit and had to go back. At, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I forgot the commandments. Um, or, you know, he was so surprised and taken aback that um that he was speaking to friendly aliens that he um yeah that he neglected his duties to write the ten commandments because the the aliens were supposed to be helping the human race um and had to go back a second time at which point maybe the aliens just wrote them down for him and said look you know there you go take that back to the to uh to the the population and uh and and you know these are your commandments um but uh yeah, so it is a semi well known fact that Moses was an alien. What I find quite extraordinary is that people don't tend to be commenting so much on the fact that Moses in this painting does actually have horns. And I would bring up a, a close up of this, but it's not good enough quality, unfortunately. But he does have horns, you can see he has horns. And rather Interestingly, Moses, this isn't the only depiction of Moses with horns, which maybe also is, you know, sort of feeds into the whole Moses was an alien thing. I don't know. Um, but the truth is, is that when um, when St. Jerome first translated the the Bible from the um, from from Hebrew into into Latin, he had trouble with the word for horns, because I think it could mean in, in Hebrew, both horns and kind of shining lights. Um, and so sometimes it's translated as, as horns. And so that's why. So when he came down from Sinai, he was like, his face was shrouded in horns, stroke, shining lights. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so Moses gets horns. Moses gets horns. So, okay, so potentially aliens were around, were around feeding into uh you know the 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 writing of the the old testament um believe that maybe maybe you do maybe you don't maybe they saved the french from a siege in 1776 maybe you believe that maybe you don't if you were in nuremberg in 1561 specifically on the 14th of April, 1561, this is what you would have experienced. Exactly like this, maybe. Um, yes, so this is basically, so it's a, it, the, the picture is a woodcut, and then you can see all this writing below, and the writing below is an account of what happened in the wee hours of the morning in Nuremberg, in 1561, which was apparently an alien invasion. Um, the account would talk about, let's bring up the image a bit more, uh, a bit bigger. Um, so the account talks about um, things flying across the sky and, and lights and bangs and, and smoke and things crashing into the ground. Um, and, and people once again bore witness to this, but well, I guess it was happening over their town, so they couldn't really uh, you know it wasn't like the people playing patank in the town square watching a castle being uh, uh under siege it was you know this just kind of fell upon them um and uh yeah and there are there are many accounts of this and it was believed once again that uh, this was sort of maybe aliens or maybe sent by god mostly again sent by god but it has been picked up by the uh, by the alien um i was gonna say conspiracy con conspiracy theorists but um they, you know who know i don't think it's conspiracy it, you know could be could be true um what really tickles me though is that so if you remember this is the uh this is the the wee hours of the morning and this is what happened and this this is supposedly an, an account um uh it's a woodcut by a man called hans um glazer or glass can't quite remember hans glass glasser glazer i don't know um 
and uh, so he's he's made this this woodcut which has been copied I think quite often but look at these guys so they're all out so this fantastic thing is happening but they've all managed to get dressed properly and put their put their hats on and put their clothes on and you know they're looking a little bit surprised but this guy in the middle he sort of looks he's like oh oh look it's all a little bit um a little bit affected maybe um but it's just the fact that they've all got their clothes on that yeah, this is supposed to be a proper account a little bit dubious wouldn't you say a little bit dubious um but this did happen over nuremberg um, and so this was a kind of, this image is woodcut stroke broadsheet newspaper. So, um, yeah, people think today, of course, that there are always explanations. Um, I don't like the explanations. I want to think that things did happen in the sky, but I think things did happen in the sky, but I think it was probably something more like, I don't know, maybe a meteorite shower or maybe some kind of eclipse, um, or, you know, I don't, who knows, I think there could probably be explanations, but we don't, we don't want to know the explanations. We want to believe in aliens. At least I do. And here, so here is this final image, which this is proof now i'm going to say this is this is proof of their existence so this is actually as you can probably see a crucifixion and it's part of a fresco that's a fantastic fresco actually in a monastery in serbia um it's painted we don't really know the the artist although it was signed by a man who called himself sergio or serge serge um, with a D in the centre, um, so, but we don't know who Serge is, which is a bit of a shame. It dates to 1350, and I don't know whether you can see in this image, but up in the top left and in the top right corner of this crucifixion are some quite strange shapes. So let's have a look. So there you go, this is top left. This one, top right. I mean, what are those things? So Serge definitely wasn't making this up. You know, he was, well, he was, <coughs> excuse me. He was, he was translating, if you like. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But he would have been told what to paint by the monks. So, what are we thinking? Are we thinking that the monks were like, okay, we've got this crucifixion and we want to make it a little bit different. I know, I know what you're going to do, Serge. You are going to paint an angel in a spaceship like in the corner of the crucifixion. Hang on a minute. Stuff it. Do two angels. Do one either side. Angels in spaceships. That's what we need. Angels in spaceships. Which is all well and good, apart from the fact that spaceships hadn't actually been invented in 1350. Um, that, so angels in spaceships is what a guy called Eric Van Daniken um, it, he believes that was actually being depicted here. So Eric Van Daniken, he is still alive as far as I'm aware. I think he's in his 80s. Um, he wrote a book, Char Chariot of, of something or other. Um, not Chariot, it's a fire. Chariot of something that, that talks about um, the existence of aliens and, and, and Moses and, um, and, and aliens in spaceships and all this kind of thing. So this guy actually believes that these are angels in spaceships, despite the fact that spaceships hadn't been invented in the 1350s. Um, but what, so what they probably are, there is another theory. So I'm, I'm really, you know, this is kind of, uh, I was, was going to say this is this is a tricky 11s is because you know on the one hand I'm sort of showing you all these things and thinking look you know angels in space it's so cool and on the other hand I'm telling you other explanations which you can choose to believe or not um so the other explanation um that has been put forward by um 
uh, scholars who study Byzantine art in particular is that actually these are um, human representations of the sun and the moon. Um, and and basically what they're saying, let's have a look at the other one as well, um, and basically what they're saying um, is that, or what they're meant to represent is that the crucifixion was such a massive, massive event in the world that was also going to have an effect on the, you know, huge elements like the sun and like the the, the moon yeah, they didn't or they, they couldn't escape the the effect of the crucifixion so that is the the theory that is put forward by uh byzantine scholars um or the theory that's put forward by um people who believe in aliens which oh, I want to say me I do I can't you know who knows we don't know they might be out there um is that they're aliens in spaceships so finally I'm gonna put comments actually back on in a second because did anyone get what this is did anyone get what this is um It is an Annunciation. Chariots of the Gods, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Andrew. Um, it is Chariots of the Gods. That's what Eric von Daniken, is it Daniken, wrote. Um, so yeah, okay. This is not an alien invasion, although it could be an alien invasion. This is actually from this fantastic annunciation which is by Carlo Crivelli it's um 1480s it's in the National Gallery um which is where I'm going this afternoon to check it out so hopefully tours will be back on very soon um but the thing that gets me about this is you know we can talk about the alien invasion but I think what we need to look at here is the fact that actually poor Virgin Mary has got a kind of laser boring into <laughs> into the top of her head um but she's she's taken it well she's taken it well so there we go uh yeah aliens exist well there are there's definitely a body of people that think that um aliens had quite a lot to do with our history and probably have you know they are they were around in history. They haven't stopped now, have they, surely? Um, so, oh, I love the fact that you believe in aliens. I, I, Holly, I, you know, I'm half and half. I do think some things can't really be explained. I don't know whether I can go with the idea that Moses went up to Mount Sinai and an alien spaceship landed in... Um, an alien spaceship landed in a volcano. What was that mean? <laughs> like, an alien spaceship landed in a volcano on Mount Sinai and aliens came out and had a little chat to Moses who may or may not have been one of them. Me! Oh, Lynn, you gem, I wish you'd do these at 12. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Um, I, oh, sorry, I don't do them at 12. I know, I hope you can get them on, on catch up. Maybe, maybe once in a occasionally I'll do one at 12 for you um I'll do one at 12 okay so aliens or UFOs space people um I guess aliens that was this week's theme last week's theme was the uh work of art called NOR as in G-N-A-W um and there is a link between them so throughout june there will be more clues more clues um and i hope you can get the link it's not a painting okay it's not a painting it's not an artist it's something else there is a completely random link well, it's not random because it's a link but between nor and aliens and there's there's going to be two more in june um not to need to come to one of my virtual art talks again, a real one. Oh, I know, Patrick. Thank you. Um, I am 
So my plan is this afternoon to go to the National Gallery and suss it out and hopefully then on Friday um, booking will be up on my website again for tours in the in the gallery. I just need to see how many people it would be appropriate to take because I'm thinking still quite small groups, maybe four people maximum. Um, and, um, and of course it's the household thing as well, isn't there still at the moment. And yeah, Zooms, I've been a bit lax on Zooms lately, but I did one last night, actually a private Zoom last night. And um, and I, I am definitely thinking about doing more Zooms. And I've also got in production, in production, um, another canapes and cocktails. So that's going again. So there's a lot of things happening. And my alien attraction necklace, I'm gonna go out this afternoon and see if I can draw the aliens to me um, in my face mask. And I wish I had some dweedy boppers. I was thinking about that earlier, but I haven't got any dweedy boppers, so I can't wear them. Um, do you remember them? Me, 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 me. <laughs> but I might buy some. <laughs> um, okay, I'm rambling. I'm going to go. I will see you next week, if not before. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye.